Half-Life was developed and released by Valve Software in 1998 and was created using a heavily modified version of the Quake engine called the Gold Source. Both Stephen King's The Mist and the video game Doom served as early inspirations for the game. At the time, Valve felt that video games could be so much more than simplistic shoot-em-up titles and hoped to build a world full of interesting characters with a compelling storyline. The name Half-Life is a scientific term used to determine the time required for any specific property to decrease by half. To simplify, it's a term most commonly used in the context of nuclear physics and nuclear chemistry. So in that regard, it makes sense as it's very evocative of the game's scientific theme. Another reason is that the Half-Life equation uses a Greek symbol called Lambda, which has since become a very prominent logo for the game. And it might sound familiar as the Black Mesa research facility in Half-Life has a sector called the Lambda Complex. The game was planned to be released sometime in late 1997, but at the last minute they felt the game wasn't good enough, so Valve actually remade the entire game and in doing so delayed it by almost a year. In November of 1998, the game was finally released, spawning several expansion packs and sequels, none of which would ever have a 3 in the title. The German version of the first Half-Life has some pretty ridiculous changes and censorship. For example, when you shoot someone or something, there's no blood whatsoever. Which is kinda strange given how there's still blood everywhere else. When you kill an ally, they don't die. Th that's right, people don't die if they are killed. Instead, they chose the much more realistic approach of sitting down while shaking their heads in disappointment at you. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. But the most odd difference is that all marines are replaced with robots. A common phrase spoken by the guards in the first Half-Life is Hey, catch me later, I'll buy you a beer. Hey, catch me later, I'll buy you a beer. Hey, catch me later, I'll buy you a beer. Hey. Catch me later, I'll buy you a beer. When you meet Barney Calhoun in Half-Life 2, who happens to be an ex-guard from Black Mesa, one of the first things he says is... About that beer I owed ya. Speaking of Barney, even though he's supposed to be the protagonist in the expansion Half-Life Blue Shift, the character model for Gordon Freeman is still used. Funnily enough, there goes the real Gordon Freeman. This is the original character model for Gordon Freeman. However, at the time, he wasn't known by that name. Instead, employees at Valve simply called him Ivan the Space Biker. The actual Gordon Freeman came much later and would go through several versions, including different glasses, different suits, and different hairstyles. Speaking of hairstyles, did you know that Gordon Freeman has a ponytail? Well, at least he did in the first game. This is also why it looked like he had a backslick on the title screen of the game. But in Half-Life 2 and all subsequent art for the game, the ponytail is gone. So if you ever thought the Gonark from Half-Life looked like a giant spider with a giant testicle, you're exactly right. The idea for the Gonark supposedly came to be when someone at Valve said, why don't we put a giant testicle on a 20 foot tall armored spider? Given this, the name might actually be a combination of the words gonad and monarch. You see, gonad is another word for the reproductive organs, and monarch would refer to the creature's boss status within the game. In Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Dr. Magnuson makes a remark about something Gordon did back at Black Mesa. Oh, and Freeman, if you pull this off, I might just forgive you for that debacle at Black Mesa. You know the one I mean, involving a certain microwave casserole. He's actually referring to a moment in the first game when the player is able to tamper with a microwave. My god, what are you doing? I mean, I, I gotta give it to the guy though, he has his priorities straight. The world is crumbling down before his eyes, but ain't nobody getting away when fucking with his food.
While you might still be waiting for a new Half-Life game, Japan got their very own back in 2006. It's called Half-Life 2 Survivor and is an arcade game based on Half-Life 2. The game was met with mostly positive reviews all around but unfortunately for the rest of the world, it's only available in Japan. While Half-Life 2 Episode 3 has been confirmed to be in development several times over the past decade, Valve, as we all know, refused to reveal any specifics whatsoever. In fact, back in 2006 the episodic trilogy was to be concluded by Christmas 2007. But we all know that never happened. This has been going on for so long that rumors, leaked information and vague statements indicates that Valve has decided to put their episodic efforts on hold and instead focus development on a sequel, Half-Life 3. But of course, no one really knows. What we do know is that between 2006 and 2007, Half-Life 2 Episode 4 was already being developed outside of Valve by Arcane Studios, the developers behind Dishonored. It carried the working title of Return to Ravenholm and would have been a standalone episode taking place before the end of Episode 2, of course in the sob-infested town of Ravenholm. In the end, Valve felt that the market was oversaturated with zombie related titles and cancel the game before any serious development could begin. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. G-Man. Who is he? What does he want? Why is he sometimes helping you and other times hindering you? Many theories exist and very little is known. In fact, we don't even know his name, if he has one. Valve has never given him an official title and G-Man is simply short for Government Man. The reason he was created in the first place was because Valve wanted a character that was neither an ally nor an enemy to the player, leading to his enigmatic behavior. Wake up and smell the ashes. The story behind the Half-Life series is never fully explained within the games. You get bits and pieces of the puzzle every now and then, yet many mysteries remain unexplained. So this is the story of Half-Life so far. It begins with the Combine Empire, a powerful intergalactic organization composed of a massive variety of both allied and enslaved species. At some point before the events of Half-Life, the Combine invade the homeworld of the Watergons. This forced them to escape to the border world, Zen. Zen is a sort of subway station that can be used to cross dimensions, but their escape was short-lived as they now became enslaved by Zen's ruler, Nihilanth. Back on Earth, scientists at Black Mesa are experimenting with teleportation technology. This eventually leads up to the Resonance Cascade, or the Black Mesa incident, secretly orchestrated by the mysterious G-Man. This event forms a portal between Black Mesa and Zen. Nihilanth viewed the portal as a liberation from the Combine and decided to invade the Earth using his minions and the enslaved water gods. A certain scientist in an orange suit managed to fight off the alien invaders and eventually end up defeating Nihilanth at the end of Half-Life. G-Man is impressed by this and gives you an ultimatum. Work for him or die. G-Man then puts Freeman in some sort of suspended animation to call upon when needed at a later time. Meanwhile, portals between the Earth and Zen is now forming everywhere and alien creatures continue to flood the planet. Ever since the event, the Combine has kept a close eye on Earth and finally decide it's time to make their move. The Combine invasion begins. Earth's population is reduced even further and the Watergons wanting revenge on the Combine team up with the remaining rebel forces. In fact, the Watergons now see Gordon Freeman as a sort of messiah after he freed them from Nihilanth. The Combine Empire continue their reign of fear and slowly turns humanity into a slave race. Around 20 years after the events of Half-Life, Freeman is awakened by G-Men and the events of Half-Life 2 begin to unfold. Freeman starts a revolution which leads to the downfall of the Citadel in City 17. 
As a last resort, the Combine destroys CD-17 to create a super portal and call for reinforcements. Eventually, the Resistance destroys the portal and we are now all eagerly waiting for Episode 3, or a third something. Surely Valve will deliver.